the sun. That's the scene at Caulfield you're looking at. Some grey clouds above, but it's been a dry morning after some much needed rain here throughout the week. At Caulfield today, rail out three metres, overcast and slow. Hello and welcome to our coverage for Blue Diamond Day for the year 2003, a day which has seen some juveniles begin their rise through the ranks of Australian racing. And this afternoon will be no different. Will it be the big V for Halle Berry uh, with the Vinery Colours or will it be one of Mick Price's uh, other runners going around? Richard Friedman joins us uh, for our Group 1 Day of Racing. Richmond, Richard, a special day, isn't it, for the Friedman family? Knowledge, Danila. Yeah. It's been a good day for us over the years. Um, I think today's going to be a tricky day for punters because wet track, first one we've seen in a while, and uh, that can tip the form on its head, and I think I'd rather be a bookie today than a punter. A lot of these horses have never seen a wet track. The two-year-old field, the, the Blue Diamond, I think only one horse has ever raced on a rain-affected track, and that is Hayley Berry, and she won on it. So she's the only one with any form, so that might make her a stronger favourite today for the big one. OK, looking at the latest odds in New Zealand as we check out uh, the horses as they parade uh, here, Richard will join us for his thoughts after each of the parades on what took his eye. On course, it's Backstreet Boy ahead of Oscar Eric as uh, we watch the horses parade. Alf Matthews joins us as we look at them parade. And uh, number one is Oscar Eric, which has been a little easy in betting and not quite as much value on the tote. Brendan, I think easy coming back in distance here. However, the heavier ground will hold him in good stead coming back in distance. Looks OK, though. Number two is a horse called Command the Wind. Dan Nikolic for Alan Bailey, uh, which is a scratching. Number three, our guided missile at longer odds, but longer odds again on the toe. Yes, well, he won at Narracourt, in fact, the Narracourt Cup. Look, he's travelled over OK. Not the prettiest looking horse I've seen. From there, we go to number four, which is Agro, which has been very easy on track, but much, much longer odds on the toe. Yeah, his form's been what you'd consider a bit ordinary, particularly his last start in the Mornington Cup and he did get beaten a long way, I'd risk him. Backstreet Boy, number five, is a horse which goes around as the ruling on-course favourite, but shorter on the tote. It's produced some eye-catching runs without winning its past two. Brendan, his runs have been satisfactory stepping up to this ground today. In my opinion, he is the pick of the yard. OK, the second outsider on course is Fortune Streak. Steve Parnham rides for his dad, Neville Parnham. Form reads ordinary, didn't have a lot of luck last start at Flemington, watched it closely, plenty worse in the race. OK, number seven is Readiness, which has been kept very safe in betting. It's a Stephen King ride for Ken Keyes. Looks very well and is ready to do something. OK, there it is on screen, our parade yard and Group 1 racing thanks to Arrowfield stud. Rotang is number eight, Linda Meach for Tony Parker. It's safe on course in betting, almost double the odds on the tote. I hadn't seen it in the flesh before. Very nice horse. I'll be including it. Willie Command is another you mentioned in your preview this morning. Glenn Boss for John Collins. Uh, again, good overs on the tote. Yes, hasn't been on slow ground. Quite a nice looking horse though. And uh, well, he has won two and he's only had nine starts, this being his tenth. Quite a nice looking individual. Before we go to New Zealand, uh, Zabwan, uh, the jumper, stepping up in journey. Let's wish him well. OK, he's the rank outsider. Richard, what took your eye in the mounting yard? I'm going to stick with Oscar Eric. I thought uh, he's, his strike rate on soft ground is actually better than his strike rate on firm ground. Um, he hasn't raced on anything slow or heavy, but I'll take him on trust there. Thought he looked very well. Rotang and uh, Backstreet Boy both have a little bit of wet track form. And I was quite impressed with the look of our guided missile, the number three, but I'll stick with Oscar Eric, number one. OK, on course, it's back. Pretty good on dead rated services. Yeah, she's uh, a mare that, uh, you know, she's been out for a little bit, but uh, she'll she'll be suited if, if they're swooping by the time they come to that race. Gets back. Um, it's not 100% on the going, but if it's not too bad, she'll be there. Good luck. Thanks, mate. Brendan, Colin Alderson. And as mentioned, Andrew, uh, Agro is a double-figure odds. The one which is the outstanding value on the tote is Rotang, one of uh, Alf's late male picks. It's almost double the odds they're betting on course. Let's join Greg Miles for his call. Right, uh, Brendan, uh, we're all on board for the first event. Good punting today, folks. Hope you're back a few winners. Wonderful day of racing ahead of us. A slow track, around 20 mils of rain falling yesterday. Fortune Street comes up into the gates. Zabuin about to get set. Willie Command is away from the line, and so too our guided missile and Agro. Agro uh, went round in the Mornington Cup on Wednesdays on the quick back up here. Didn't have much luck there. Got caught very wide and met some interference at the turn and ran last. Our guided missile comes up. He won the Narra Court Cup. He was never on the track. It was a pretty tough performance, but uh, his wet track credentials don't quite back him up here. He's 11 wet track runs and only been placed twice. We need Willie Command to move in. 
He's a little chance in this race. He really hasn't had much luck and the distance will suit him today. All in now. Track is slow. 5.11 the penetrometer. Rail is out three. The premier signs plate to get Blue Diamond and Oakley Plate Day off and running. And away they go. Oscar Eric jumping well out the back was Backstreet Boy and also our guided missile. Rotang began fast. Agro Whiteouts driving towards the front. Settling into stride. Rotang has been headed off here by Agro who sped clearly away and is out by three. Rotang is second. Oscar Eric third by the 1600. Two lengths then to Willie Command. About a length away. Fortune Streak on the outside. Readiness the fence and then came Backstreet Boy. Two lengths to our guided missile and Zabuin is last of all. Agro setting a good tempo out to the 1400 he's three and a half clear Rotang in second placing Oscar Eric is third a length and a half then Willie Command fourth in the white colours followed by Fortune Streak a length to readiness away from the speed today behind him on the outside Backstreet Boy and then our guarded missile and Zabuin is last they've topped the rise at the 1200 metres and Agro's been left to do it his own way out in front he's five lengths clear Rotang is second Oscar Eric three lengths away third Fortune Streak on the outside of Willie Command and one to readiness and then Backstreet Boy a length and a half as they go by the thousand hour guided missile and about three lengths to Zabu and pushed along not happy in the ground. As they made their way to the railway side and it's Agro out by four, Rotang second in third placing then came Oscar Eric being followed by Willie Command on the inside of Fortune Streak and Backstreet Boys peeled out three wide. Next to length away is Readiness, who's being hard ridden. And then came uh, back towards the end, our guided missile, Anza Buen. But Agro up the 600, he's still six lengths in front, coming up towards the turn. In second placing, Rotang, followed by Oscar Eric. And then Willie Command and Backstreet Boy plugging away as they come to the corner. 400 to go. Agro's lead about three and a half now, coming around the turn from Rotang. Willie Command's running on. And then Oscar Eric and Backstreet Boy. Agro the leader. Willie Command a danger, runs into second from Rotang. Oscar Eric and then Backstreet Boy down to the 200. Agro in front of Willie Command who's a big danger on the outside. Willie Command with 100 metres to go has taken the lead now from Agro. Oscar Eric and Backstreet Boy. It's Willie Command in front about 50 down. He's holding on though and it's Willie Command first. Willie Command beats Oscar Eric Backstreet Boy. Agro and then came our guided missile. Followed in by Rotang. A long break to readiness to Buen and Fortune Streak last in. Number nine, Willie Command, appreciating the longer trip today. He'll pay $8 and $2. Oscar Eric, $1.60. Backstreet Boy will pay $1.20. Should be 9.15 in the first on the card as we await the uh, numbers to be semaphored. Yeah, he really did appreciate the trip and uh, he has handled the ground beautifully without any problem whatsoever. Four-year-old, only his 10th outing, trained by John Collins, ridden by Glenn Boss, who always manages to pick up a race when he comes down to Melbourne. Willie Kamar just got into some trouble the other day. And his only wet track exposure before this, he uh, did win a race in New Zealand over 1,400 metres. Agro ran along at a solid pace early, but uh, he was picked up about 100 metres from home. Oscar Eric, just another genuine performance. Backstreet Boy, touch on the disappointing side, I thought. He worked home well, but he was never close enough to win it. 9.15 on race one, race two is the Schweppes Cup at 12.40. Richard, Willie Command, Glenn Boss uh, got the pace set up in front and from there on it was a, a one horse race. It was a lovely ride by Glenn Boss. He just took the soft run in behind a few of the, the, uh, the horses that were chasing Agro who, who set a, a nice strong pace and he pulled out just before the corner, eased him into the centre of the track where he made his run, gathered up the leader and uh, just held off Oscar Eric who was finishing on quite well. Oscar Eric, he was just grinding home like he does and Backstreet Boy was making ground late but was never any threat of challenging the winner Willie Command. And Agro held on for fourth, so uh, a gutsy performance from the tearaway leader. Yeah, it certainly was. Obviously Agro likes a, a little bit of soft track and Willie Command might be a wet tracker for the future. Oh, Backstreet Boy, hey, he's going to be an out and out stay the way he plugs the way to the line? Yes, he might, <laughs> he might ride some very long races when they don't run too many of them. <laughs> Willie Command, uh, you've seen your dividends for the first race on the card. Now, New Zealand ratings you're looking at, the seventh race. Three points over there at the moment uh, for National Treasure. Uh, four and Floozies eased a fraction, but only just. Uh, Miss Bowie around the same odds as the tote on track. Uh, a fraction unders you're getting for Figaretta. She's eased on track. And uh, down the bottom there, Sky Tripper, 
uh, has been pretty uh, well supported on track, but big overs there on the tote now, Sky Tripper. So there's been a bit of a nibble for the nine, and Dantify is easy now, so uh, it's unders on the tote. But Forum Plusy is still the uh, short price favourite at a dollar eighty as they head to the start for the first. Oh, grabs the return of Victory Vane, uh, the much lauded two-year-old who sort of went missing in action during the spring, Richard. I want to see Victory Vane perform this time in. I've seen two-year-olds do this before, as we all have. They have their bright, shining flash across the sky and then they disappear. It may not be the case, but I think you've just got to wait and see. We'll see how she goes this afternoon. Also, Half Hennessy, who there was quite a boom around, who raced and placed against her in the Champagne Stakes. But for the first race on the card, Forum Floozy's all of the rage. Figurette is the second pick in betting and uh, Dandify firms in all the time. Longer odds on Super Tab. Just take note today with Quaddies, they kick off late. Caulfield, it's race five. Cheltenham, race four. Randwick, it's in race five onwards. And uh, likewise, we kick off with the first leg at Doombin, race four onwards. All in Randwick. As film walks in and National Treasure resuming today will be the last into the 1,400 metre gates. The Energy Australia handicap Opening a big day of nine races at Royal Randwick. National Treasure being handled by Jimmy Cassidy and uh, she walks up now. National Treasure is in and they're ready to hop. Racing this time, Dan Defy a little slowly away, and the forum floozy jumped quickly, so did Sky Tripper, and bustling up on the inside is Miss Bowie, and Film is not far away, followed closely by Punt on Dane Hill, and then Figaretta followed by Octessa, second last is Dan Defy on two and a half National Treasure. Onto the course proper, they travel now, and Sky Tripper is the leader, Film pulling hard into second, Posse and Octessa making a line of three. Miss Bowie fourth inside of forum floozy, followed by Punt on on Dane Hill. A length and a half further away is Figueretta on the outside of Dan Defy at about four to National Treasure. This is the order as they go to the 700 and Sky Tripper in front of half to three quarters film. Octessa deep is third, followed over on the inside by Ms. Bowie. A length to Forum Floozy, then punt on Dane Hill, followed by Dan Defy. Figueretta second last and still four lengths to National Treasure. Sky Tripper is the leader as they start the run around the corner. Three quarters to a length clear on film. A length and a half, Ms. Bowie followed by Octessa and a couple of lengths to Forum Floozy and Panton Dane Hill is on the extreme outside at the 300 and Miss Bowie dashes to the lead from Sky Tripper and Film. Forum Floozy moving into second posse but Beedman's working overtime on her. At the 100 marker Miss Bowie's more than a length on Forum Floozy and Figueretta and then Panton Dane Hill but Miss Bowie wins it well. It's Miss Bowie scoring nicely from Forum Floozy Figueretta and Panton Dane Hill and then Dandify Octessa Sky Tripper a film and national treasure never a hope and was last throughout. And across the line, 435, Miss Bowie, Brent Stanley for uh, Alan Denham. And the value bet uh, away went four from three, Richard Friedman. That was a nice ride, Brent Stanley. It was a nice ride. She took over the race about 200 metres to go and was just packing too many guns uh, for the second horse, which, uh, which we got out in plenty of time for him, Floozy, but just couldn't reel her in and uh, she was too strong, Miss Bowie. She sure was. Forum Floozy, the runner-up in third place and going away of Figaretta, which started second elect in betting. A Brent Stanley ride for Alan Denham and uh, Dan Defy perhaps anchored down uh, in the back of the field with the, uh, the big weight. A bit out of form and really needs to recover that form. She really hasn't done it this time in yet, but, uh, you know, she may improve with that run. Looks as though uh, Punt on Dane Hill will get fourth, uh, number eight. So four, three, five and eight will await that to be confirmed. That's across the line, Randwick's first race on the card. New Zealand, eighth race on the card. Let's look ahead there. And, and the ratings went 3 1 2 5. Fontaine from the Stephen Trevor McKee yard. Uh, a winner two runs back is the top rate of the Centaine Philly. Latest check of betting figures. Now, Fontaine, this runner, check of betting looking this way. Uh, the ratings full order 5, 6, 2, and 3 equal third pick. Second race is the listed event on the card. Darren Gauchy settles up with a host of good chances this afternoon. Of course, later on, he's hoping Hammerbeam can be successful in a blue diamond. In this next race, he rides Mythological. I am. Um, she's done really well. Uh, she seems to race and uh, she can't do any more what she's done. She keeps... Well, third picks Mythological and step ahead. Mythological slight value and outside of those, gold attire is uh, in betting and Conspectus. Conspectus is similar to what they're betting on course, but Gold Attire, if you like it, 
is uh, at much longer odds. Now, Cheltenham, as we look ahead, ratings went three from two and five, the number one, and there is a value bet in application for the first race. Quaddy kicking off in race four. Note first fours all races New South Wales today, Metropolitan. And at Cheltenham, we have Unitab first fours on races four. And also go right down to race number seven as a Unitab first four as well. Greg Miles, as they call them, into line. Right, Brendan getting ready here now. And uh, moving up as Wild Heart next to Gold Attire. Gold Attire in blinkers first time this afternoon. Big SA stepping out from a maiden win, as impressive as he was at Bendigo. Step ahead's been uh, easy on the market uh, today. He's sweating up pretty badly this afternoon. I, I don't know whether I've seen him do that as freely as he is today anyway. Now, Mythological has moved up here. Step ahead is broken out in the sweat, about to link in. And Storm Prince has the outside barrier. He's beaten two of his main rivals here at his last start, Lord Volksrad and Step Ahead. And he's been on wet ground and won it. That's something well in his favour today. Lord Volksrad had good support. In fact, at one stage of betting, he held favouritism. But he's not been on a wet track. See how he performs today. Storm Prince moved in. So the listed Schweppes Cup field is set to go. Favourites drawn inside and outside gates. Away they go. Lord Volksrad jumped OK. Storm Prince out reasonably. In the early stages, Conspectus is going up to try for the lead and Mythological wideouts on the improve. As they go past the 1,400 metres now and going up on the outside, Mythological to join Lord Volksrad. Conspectus right behind them third and Storm Prince having a little luck early. He's caught wide. He's three deep and he might have to boot towards the lead. In behind them, Tantralite step ahead, Gold Attire and Wild Heart last. Mythological lead they've not gone all that hard storm prince deep out has moved to second lord volksrad's getting a good trail right behind them conspectus in the center is now uh, storm prince has got in one off the rail outside the leader two links step ahead back fifth in the orange followed by tantralite gold attire and wild heart to the railway side at the 800 and mythological a half in front now storm prince second has lord volksrad pocketed on the fence and conspectus now getting a good trail a length to step ahead gold attire out wider and then tantralite and wild heart mythological left alone clear by half a length. Storm Prince is second. Conspectus moved up to third deep on the course. Lord Volksrad next. He's being passed by Step Ahead and then Gold Attire. Wild Heart and Tantralite is now last. Up to the turn and Oliver's taken Storm Prince to the lead from Conspectus. Mythological. Lord Volksrad working into the clear from Step Ahead. Gold Attire. Storm Prince the leader from Conspectus throwing down the challenge on the outside. Lord Volksrad gets into the clear under the whip and Step Ahead wider out. Storm Prince narrowly from Conspectus. Lord Volksrad's working home and then step ahead conspectus put the head in front of storm prince step ahead the outside conspectus with lord volksrad coming through in the middle conspectus had the narrow lead though and just wins conspectus wins from uh, lord volksrad or tantra light step ahead out wider and then storm prince just behind the mythological gold attire and a long last was wild heart very busy finish but conspectus has got in number four 9 30 and 2 30 Enjoying the soft ground, Noel Kello and Mick Price. I think this will get the verdict. Judge might call for a photo. Very busy finish. Uh, Tantralite has made up a lot of ground late to figure in a photo finish. Lord Volksrad was there. Storm Prince fighting it out with Conspectus, but he's wilted on his run in the last 100 metres. Four wins at Conspectus, Noel Kello and Mick Price. Second, five, Lord Volksrad, Brett Preble and Brian Mayfield-Smith. Third, number eight, Tantralite, the eye-catching finisher, Stephen Baster and Leon Corstens. Four, five, eight. That's confirmed. Fourth end, number two, step ahead. Well, Conspectus, the new boy on the scene. He's got there about a long neck, very busy finish. Fourth horse has only been beaten about a half length on the line. Storm Prince disappointed. He did have to do some work early, and that's told on him over the concluding stages as uh, he's weakened out behind the first four over the line. In fact, uh, he was officially fifth. Four, five and eight on race two. Third, the Angus Armanesco at 120. Gee, we're looking forward to that race. And fourth here has gone the way of uh, number two, which is Step Ahead. Fifth has gone the way of number three, Storm Prince, which Richard looked to have its chance cornering up, but just uh, overpowered the last uh, stages. Yeah, he had to work a little hard early. He had to cross from that outside gate and probably... Uh, made him a sitting shot and he's drifted back to the rail too which probably would not be the best place to be but uh the second horse was off the bit chasing before the corner and uh he's kept going well and ended up going to the lead there conspectus and uh it was a strong win in the end mcprice having an extraordinary run
But, and, uh, and Noel Callow, not to mention, won a Magic Millions in Adelaide during the week, won a couple last Saturday in Adelaide. Yeah, no, they're, they're having a great run together, and uh, Lord Volksrad, well, he's proved expensive for punters again. Not beaten far, but beaten just the same. And off Matthews Rui once again, Lord Volksrad uh, being beaten. So that is the concluding stages. Storm Prince, green sleeves and green cap there, overpowered late as Conspectus collects the cash in the first of our stakes races from here. Now, Chelton, let's look ahead. First race on the card is over the 1,812 metres. Uh, ratings going with running game here, the Gary Kennewell runner. And Morfordville uh, winner last time out where it beat home rations. Took off a long way from home on that occasion. So as Noel Callow resumes here, we look ahead to Randwick. Second race on the program. It's due to go 15 from now. Silent Impact tops the ratings ahead of three. Princess Adelaide, uh, the two, which is Ears, Ronnie and Regal Alliance, number four. So one, three, two and four, as we hear from the trainer of Silent Impact. Well, coming into this second event at uh, Randwick today, Gerald Ryan trains Silent Impact. Uh, and you're backing him up quick. Uh, he ran last Saturday, Gerald. You must be happy with him. Yeah, that was done very well, Chris. And uh, he's a bit hard to train because he's such a hard puller at home. We only poke around quietly with him off the pony and ride him every second day and that. But, no, the horse has done well. And he's getting back to something like his right journey and the sting off the track. You know, I expect the horse to run pretty well, really. Yeah, well, he's got the, the top weight. He's got to carry that through this uh, slow ground. What do you make of the track so far? Oh, well, after watching the first and listening to it going past, it didn't sound nowhere near as bad as I thought it would. Um, we've had a lot of rain at Rose Hill this morning. and They've had, what, 43 mils or something mm. for the week here. But I think also going to have to be able to handle it. And not a bog, but they're going to have to be able to handle it. Well, how's Clangalang going to handle things first up in the Royal Sovereign? Well, he's never been on a rain-affected ground. He has trolled on it and trolled fairly well on it. Um, you know... It was first up with 58 and a half. You'd still like to see him on top of the ground where it wouldn't bottom him out. But now they'll run along quick up front. He'll get back. You'll find the line good. The horse has come back well. Now, have you had a little chat to Bello Senor? Is he, is he going to go OK first up? He's a bit of a, a nutcase sometimes. Oh, he can be. But last time in, when he came to Sydney, he raced really well and consistent. And he has got... They're racing this time. Lord Volksrat and Conspectus bounce quickly here from Tantralite Hills going back. Mythological and Storm Prince are pushing forward out deep. Wildheart just off them when they settle down, step ahead back in the middle. Lord Volksrat up on the inside of Mythological and Conspectus back in the middle. Storm Prince is fourth out three deep from Tantralite, step ahead. Then Gold to Tyre and two to Wildheart. Over at the 1,200 metre mark and Mythological went to the front. Storm Prince will go up on the outside second. Back in the middle is Lord Volksrad back to third. Back in the centre then Conspectus and Storm Prince still three deep. Two lengths step ahead on the outside of Tantra. Lighter length end to Gold Attire and Wildheart back in the middle. Slowly run at the 1,000 Mythological lead. With outside it now Storm Prince and Lord Volksrad back a length away third. Three quarters Conspectus fourth. A length end to step ahead. Gold Attire deep back on the inside Tantra Light. Wildheart last of all. Mythological near the inside, a half in front of Storm Prince in the green cap and green sleeves. Volksrad trails third the rail. Outside of Conspectus going up third now. Then step ahead in the orange colours. Two to the back gold attire. Wildheart and Tantralite. Storm Prince goes up to Mythological on the turn. Conspectus further out and Lord Volksrad waits for a run behind them. Then step ahead. They're coming around the bend with about 380 to go. Conspectus up outside, Storm Prince. Two then to out in the middle, Lord Volksrad. Then step ahead, coming to the outside. Storm Prince under pressure. Conspectus coming at it. Storm Prince fights back. Lord Volksrad down the centre, coming home well. Storm Prince and Conspectus from Lord Volksrad. Conspectus has got his nose in front. Conspectus just in front, near the line from Storm Prince. Lord Volksrad is lunging late, but Conspectus just wins. Conspectus a neck to either Lord Volksrad or Tantralite, who flash late. Step ahead, wider out. Then Storm Prince, further back, then Mythological, Gold Attire and a gap then to Wildheart, last of all. Number four, Conspectus, Noel Callow, 10.20 win, 2.60 for the place for the minors, Ford, Lord uh, Volksrad. It'll pay a dollar, uh, number five, Lord Volksrad, a dollar fifth, 40 or eight, which is uh, Tantralite, it's showing 5.60. So he had a good battle, but he shook off Storm Prince, Lord Volksrad got his chance to run the leader down. The one that flashed late from back in the field was Tantralite back in the centre, but Conspectus hangs on to win and wins at about a neck to a half length. Four goes in the frame here, number four, Conspectus, Noel Callow. Might be the start of the big day, let's hope for Mick Price. Lord Volksrad will get second, just in front of Tantralite. Four the winner. Second will go to number five, Lord Volksrad. He had his chance in the straight. And about a half head away, third will be Tantralite, who was best of the closing horses on the outside. 
All what right, four, five and eight, the numbers there ahead of Totes. Let's go to Kembla Grange. And a very good afternoon, Kevin Thompson. Good on your list, good afternoon. On four, five and eight, four conspectors, Noel Callow, 1020 win, 260 a place, five Lord Volks ride, a dollar 48, Tantralite, third, 560. The Quinella, 1740, exacta, 3580 in the 458 trifecta, 526.20 in the third. Lashed opens 4.30. And continues on course here. Interesting. Uh, we'll see what happens with a half head being the margin. Stephen Baster yeah. firing it in. Yes, I said Stephen King before, but it's Stephen Baster. And uh, look, he's had a look at the tape and he's uh, convinced he's got a shot, but uh, we'll be able to get the tape running a little later and uh, we'll have a look head on and see what we can make of it. A little bit of value here for the top. He's silent impact. Um, uh, in fact, he's, he's uh, the reverse, sorry. He's a little unders on the tote. Uh, so um, here's Ronnie about the same, although fraction uh, fraction less on the tope. Uh, the other move in the race has come for, uh, there's a little support too for Regal Alliance, so that's about line ball at the moment. Um, Disarray is uh, definitely unders on the tote. Future Army, you're getting value there, although it has been a bit of a drifter on track, and uh, Hollow is about the same as its price on track with the tote too. So... Uh, who knows? Up with the stewards. Uh, you're a betting man. It's good to see you in that form <laughs> nice and early today. <laughs> Richard Friedman, of course, uh, multiple media personality as you hear, uh, hear him on radio, <laughs> television, everywhere these I days. Do plug? <laughs> 2KY, big sports breakfast. Yeah, 10.17. Now, Randwick, as uh, we're near start time there, we'll take this break and we'll be joining Ian Craig in a moment or two from now. We're on the countdown to Randwick's next race on the car. As you can see, there's been good support for Silent Impact on the tote. And we have a riding uh, change for you. Comes along in the third race on the program. So that's the latest news on Randwick. Gerald Ryan goes around with Silent Impact here, and it's come in a couple of dollars on the tote, as you may have seen. And uh, this horse by Casual Eyes hasn't won for a while. It's only won six of 56, gets its chance today on Rain Effect, the ground, which it has placed on previously. Ears Ronnie's the total act. Hollow continues to firm and Silent Impact likewise. Uh, here's Ronnie, he's been around for a while. I think uh, he's been around in a few two milers from memory as well, Richard. He has been around longer than you and I, Brendan. And for you, that's a long time. And here's Ronnie, <laughs> oh, poor old ears, Ronnie. He must know every panel of the fence by now. Push his walking frame round again this afternoon. I can tell you the jockeys are out of the stewards room here. So uh, all well, we await now as they deliberate is a final decision from uh, the chairman of stewards, Des Gleeson. Yes, I'm sticking with Lord Volksrad. I'll bet he holds it, but, you know, have been wrong before. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> You're paid to have an opinion, aren't you? <laughs> well, that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sticking to it. Yeah. OK, the value bet in uh, application at Randwick, where is Ronnie's the tote pick. They're about to be called into line. It's betting order 2, 9, 4 and 1. And then the 3 is the next pick in betting. Princess Adelaide from the Gwenda Markle Yard, which has been training a lot of winners uh, around the Sydney region in recent weeks. Princess Adelaide, a last start Gosford Class 4 winner. And it currently shows up around the $11 quote. So the line starts to take good shape at Randwick. This is a stayers event. 2,400 metres is the journey. And uh, the total act is still ears Ronnie. Being challenged all the time by the John Hawks runner, Hollow, by Bite the Bullet. There's not a lot of uh, wet track form in this. It's going to be a bit on trust with some of these runners. Uh, here's Ronnie's not really suited by it, but I'll okay. try hard. They're all in. Here's Ian. They both uh, raced out here a couple of weeks ago. Set to run. There they go, 2,400 metres ahead of them, and they jumped in a pretty even line. Here's Ronnie darting up on the inside to lead narrowly over Ascend. Third posse is taken by Silent Impact, and then Princess...